Um, well, I mean, the season started off with a bang. I mean, we, how could you start off any better? I mean, that trip up to Ottertail County really kind of set the tone for, um, you know, what we thought we were going to be getting ourselves into. We absolutely smashed them up there. And then uh, we came back down and we did a bunch of river backwaters. That's usually the first that freezes up around here. We started like working together as a team really, really good. And uh, we came back to the Metro, uh, had that wicked stretch where there was like zero ice and uh, managed to make it through that, being able to scrape some content together and everything. And we hit the ground running really, really hard after that. Really everything couldn't have gone better. Uh, I think we caught, I couldn't even tell you how many fish over 14, um, 15, and then Griff's absolute mammoth in the backwaters. And uh, it was pretty amazing. It was a ton of fun. We caught a lot of really nice fish. I mean, Griff popped the heaviest 16 and a quarter I think I've ever seen. It kept going right into, you know, like first five or six episodes, maybe even seven. We were just catching big ones in every episode and yeah, you get all that success right away. You get really excited and you're like, man, things are going really good, really good, really good. And you hope they keep going that way. Um, and it just kept feeling like something was building, like it was gonna happen, it was gonna happen. Then we hit that midwinter lull and now we're kind of struggling and. Uh, but ultimately, you know, fish are gonna do what they wanna do and really uh, kick you in the teeth sometimes. It feels like we're still doing the right things, but we're not having the results that we were expecting to. And uh, something's gotta give here. Something's gotta shake up a little bit. We need, we need some, some fresh mojo. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of the Crappie Chronicles. I'm your host, Adam Bartusik, and uh, yeah, this is gonna be a unique one. So um, we kinda got thrown into a really unique opportunity this week. We had no plan for what we were gonna do because the bite's been really bad, but we stumbled into a plan because of our friends from Lift Bridge Brewing. So this weekend's kinda gonna be brought to you by them. We're gonna be having some good beer, hanging out with friends, and uh, we got like, Got an ice house. That's not, this is not typically how we fish. So Liftbridge Brewing kind of works a little bit with fractional toys and you can totally rent an ice house if you want to. So it's super cool. They hooked it up fat. This is gonna be our base camp for the weekend. So tonight, Pinkala is gonna be slinging some unreal food that we're gonna cook with Liftbridge beer. But first, we're gonna go out and try to catch some really big fish. Uh, but yeah, first, let's, let's show you this thing. Okay, so, check the door. Wind's gassing right now, but it's supposed to die down a bit. But this place is sick, the setup is really sweet. So, first of all in here, obviously, we got the goods. Lift bridge hooking it up, and uh, yeah, so that's my supply for the night. Right here, we've got our kitchen. Ryan is gonna be cooking some unreal food in here tonight using the beer. So, that'll be sweet. Obviously, it's set up for some fishing. We're gonna move everything around a little bit when we actually get everything rolling. But first, we're gonna go hop around to a few different lakes and uh, yeah, check some new water. We, uh, we're getting out of our rut of fishing kind of the same stuff, same things, pushing the boundaries a little bit and gonna go check some new stuff. So, time to get on the road. When anglers think of trophy fisheries and dream destinations, most think of untouched locations far away from civilization, but not us. Located within 60 miles of downtown Minneapolis is a mecca of crappie fishing opportunities. These waters are home to the biggest crappies across the ice belt, and maybe even the Midwest. Our goal is simple, to document the catch and release of as many trophy caliber crappies as possible in one ice season. Along the way, we hope to educate you on how to catch the biggest crappie of your life. Joining me again this season, two of the best ice fishermen in the country, Adam Griffith and Matt Waldron. With the help of wild game cook, Brian Pinkala, we will also show you new and creative ways to prepare fish like you've never seen before. The ice season is here and we're ready to rock. Welcome back. This is season two of the Crappie Chronicles.
this video is sponsored by Liftbridge Brewing. Yes, dude! Are you excited to be in a permanent? Yes. I'm excited to be out of the wind. Because <laughs> that sucked. No more wind in here. No more wind! It's real nice in here. No, Not very windy. Nice and warm. Waldo moving in his whole house. Usually. He does like to bring a lot of stuff. So the nice thing about a K-drill um, is if you have a hard house like this, you can actually redrill your holes. With a conventional auger, you usually can't do that, or it's going to be a, a struggle to do it. But K-drill with the ease right through there. And we don't smoke ourselves out. Yeah. Correct. No, no gas. No gas. Yes! Woo! Yes! Been here about five minutes. This was the best fish we caught all day. We should have just stayed here, Bart. I know. Yeah, bad call. Bad call. <laughs> we made a bad call. We're never leaving. <laughs> Literally, I glowed that thing, dropped it down there, and he just came and hammered it. I couldn't even find the pinhead on the graph yet, and he already had it. All right, we're on. We're on a bus! Oh my god! <laughs> okay, so we're gonna be setting up some eye first pros here. And we went right now, we're on top of kind of a weed hump right now. And so we're putting one out on the edge to keep these from freezing in overnight. We've got some ice defenses rigged up onto some uh, amped outdoors batteries some of the best batteries made on the market. I think how high do you want this one? Something like a foot and a half off? Yeah. Oh, we set this up. We just get this guy draped over into a hole. Get her turned on. Now she's set on low. So I just throw out. So now that'll keep the hole open. Nice. This is their 12 volt, 12 amp hour battery, and it should power this. I mean, I mean for days and days. Uh, they make a lot of different batteries. They make a 12 volt, 6 amp, which is great for guys that are going to be out hole hopping. Uh, it's super lightweight. It's only a pound and a half, uh, so it'll really shave just a ton of weight off of your setup. Um, they also have really large batteries, so. For any of you guys using the big Garmin's and uh, Lowrances and Hummingbird units, they make what's called an NMC battery, which is a 16 and a half volt battery. It gives you much better picture quality and fa uh, faster processor speed. So these batteries have been super impressive and they're right out of Hudson, Wisconsin. So uh, they got great customer service. Uh, Matt's the owner, he does a really good job over there. So definitely check these guys out. But this is a cool little setup to keep your hole from freezing in and potentially losing fish because when it freezes in, the flag doesn't trip because the line gets stuck and then you're gone without a minnow essentially. So uh, we're gonna rig up another one here. This one's right on a weed edge going into a little shallow basin. And then we have another one off of the end of this hump which has a little point on it. So we're gonna you know, go over there, set up another one, and then get back in the house because it's still a little chilly outside. All right, so we've been fishing in the house quite a bit. We've actually caught a decent number of crappies. No big ones yet, but we're catching them. We just put a couple rattle reels down, and then we're going to get ready to cook. So we've just been kind of hanging out, checking out a few of these beers, and uh, now we're going to cook with some of these beers. So um, right now, so what we're doing tonight, we're going to do a beer-battered fish po' boy sandwich. So we're going to do those, a little bit of fried fish. Um, on the stove we got this baller little kitchen set up here and we have an oven too so what we're gonna do is put together a little uh, beer bread with some of the lift bridge beer real quick I already have it kind of pre-mixed almost so I just got to add a little bit of ingredients together and get it in the oven and then while we're doing everything else that'll be cooking away and when we get it done it's all gonna be perfect so I'm gonna show you how to do that right now I do I got a little pre-mixed thing here so this is just uh, basically self-rising flour it's basically three cups of flour with uh, some um, baking powder in it, salt, and sugar. So I'm gonna add that to this bowl, a little butter, and then we're gonna do one can of Liftbridge beer. And we chose this one right here. This is the Elevated Amber. So we're gonna put that in there, mix it all together, go into this little glass pan right here, pop her in the oven. It's gonna hang out till it gets golden brown. We might, I think I'm gonna add a little cheese to it too, just for, just for cause, but I'll show you how to mix it up real quick and uh, pop it in the oven. 
sandwiches so we're gonna do a beer battered fish and then I got a little bit of an onion cabbage slaw that I'm gonna to put together really quick so I don't really have any bowls so I'm just gonna use that same container that I use this in so I'm just gonna very finely slice the cabbage and the red onion put it in here with some lime juice and some salt and just kind of shake it up and let that hang out for a little bit and then we'll get the fish battered up get it fried and then we'll put the sandwiches together so I'm gonna make the slaw quick and then we'll get to the fish And uh, now I'm gonna batter the fish up, and then I'll, right before we build all the sandwiches, I'm gonna make a little bit of a sauce that's super simple, it only has like two ingredients. So um, we got the Catch and Cook beer batter. This is a new one that we haven't used yet. Um, so we're gonna give this a shot tonight, and we're gonna mix it with this uh, Liftbridge Gateway Pilsner. So with the beer batter, um, there is instructions like ratios to mix it, but essentially all you're trying to do is with any beer batter mix, you're just trying to get the consistency thick enough that you can coat the fish without it caking up super big. So I'm gonna actually use probably this whole pack because um, we're gonna be making a lot of sandwiches here. And I got a bag of crappy flays right here. So get this in the bowl, get the beer in it, get it mixed up, and we're gonna start frying. So I just put some fish in here. I just mixed it around. So I'm just going to take out the pieces individually and just drop them in the hot oil. And uh, the kind of the key with a beer batter is because it needs to fry like around all the fish rather than just being like fried onto the outside. Um, we want to get it in there and submerge it like right away. So I'm just going to do them one at a time and they go pretty quick. So just like that, you just don't want it to float up right away. But as soon as it gets submerged, you're good to go on to the next one. Griff's fishing. Oh, Pink's fishing now too. Little mid mid cook jig fish. Hold on, everybody. Pink's cooking some food. I took a poop in a bucket. <laughs> and we're catching crappies on pinheads. And what time is it? Like 12 o'clock, something like that. Not too shabby. This is actually pretty relaxing, not being out in the wind like we were all day today. That was not fun. So we're just going to keep at it here, having some fun, drinking some lift bridge, and we're about to tear in some food in a little bit. Uh, looks like Pink's done with the fish. Um, I think the bread's still cooking. Yeah, we're just going to keep after it here, and I got another one down there. Okay, so everything is done. Uh, I got some little French breads here that we're going to use for buns and everything. Um, last thing I'm going to do, I got a little bit of mayonnaise and some crunchy chili onion. Uh, and we're just going to make a quick sauce, just a little bit of mayo on that. And I got some scallions I'm just going to mix in there really quick. So nothing super crazy, but that crunchy chili onion stuff is just insane. They make a garlic one too. That's really, really good. But I'm just going to have this. I'm going to put this on both sides of the bun. Put the slaw on the bottom, put the fish on the top, and that's it. Alright, so there's one all made up. That's a po' boy right there, crappie, uh, beer battered crappie po' boy. And uh, that slaw in there is great because with that mayo sauce, it's super rich, so that's a nice acidic sauce, so it kind of cuts some of that richness and really balanced, nice deal there. So we're gonna smash these. The bread is done in the oven, so I'm gonna pull that out. It's gonna be smoking out, so we'll let it cool down just a little bit. And uh, we'll crush these, have a little beer bread, and catch some more crappies. Let's go! Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the deal right there. All right, Waldo, what'd you think of everything? Uh, sandwich, definitely top tier. But this bread is the absolute deal right now. Wow, that is some good bread. Locking down the beer bread. Oh yeah.
I'm not gonna lie, probably the first time I can honestly say that I've made beer bread on the lake. But it turned out, I'm about it. We're kind of done with the whole cooking thing. We've made an absolute disaster of this kitchen, so we're probably gonna have to clean up a little bit, but um, I think we're getting a little bit cashed out here. So we're gonna maybe uh, put some rattle reels down, maybe crash for a little bit, get the old sleeping bags going, and uh, see what happens. I think we're gonna fish probably out here tomorrow, just somewhere around the shack a little bit, and then uh, we got a new game plan we really don't have an idea of what we're gonna do tomorrow so we're gonna kind of sleep on it figure out a new game plan but for now we're gonna be chilling in here rattle reels and tip ups down all night and see what the heck happens um, we're packing up and we are gonna go make some moves this lake doesn't have exactly the potential we're looking for. It was fun to set the hook, hang out with the guys, drink some beer, and make some good food though last night. So a huge thank you to Liftbridge and Fractional Toys for hooking it up. But now we're back on the chase. And we're changing it up. We're gonna head back to the rivers because the lakes have been so bad. And uh, we're gonna go to a new spot that we haven't fished today. So we're gonna go try out the rivers. Hopefully it's better. I mean, anything can be better than it's been for us lately. So. Just know that everybody struggles when they're ice fishing or chasing big fish. We don't catch big ones all the time. Um, and it has been a struggle the last two or three weeks, but we're gonna change it up, go hit the river, and uh, hopefully find some big ones. So we just started drilling some holes and uh, popped a hole and some bait flew out. So this is what we're dealing with. And this is what we're thinking these crappies are eating down there. I'm not totally sure on the species of that. We're calling it a pin minnow basically. But if you look at these uh, clam pinhead minnows, I mean the shape of it and everything, that's kind of what we're going for. So, I mean, we might switch it up, go to like a white, maybe like a glitter color or something. Just try to match that a little bit closer. But anytime you get a chance to actually see the bait that they're chasing, it definitely can help you key in on the color to to throw down there for them, but sweet little fish, definitely. All right, let's tie some up. Okay. Nice. There we go. Little guy, but start. What's well, not recording? Son of a. First one of the day, pretty nice fish, probably what, 12 and a half? Oh yeah, everything else got out of his way. Boom. Finally a crappie. Jeez. Tons and tons of gills down there and then finally bang. Pinhead. Nice crappie. Sweet. Hold on, warm them up. <laughs> oh, there we go. Crappie. Yep. Did I know it was crappie? That's why I said, "There we go." <laughs> before there you even, go. before you even did it, I was like, hey, "There we go." I know what you are. We got skinny here, so. Yeah. Which is weird because of the amount of bait in here yeah, is it's... ridiculous like a razor blade of a back. I mean, look at those skinny that guy is. Plenty of food, dude. Eat. Little tiny. But it is a crappie. Let's get a giant. Come on, they're here. So, a little update for you guys here. We've drilled almost this entire thing out. Um, we've gone through quite a few batteries and we went to one end, not the deal. Didn't even catch a crappie. Came over here and so far we've gotten like, what, how many would you say Bart? Like maybe nine, 10, something like that. Um, and it's pretty much just the end, just the other end of, the, of this lake where this little basin or trough runs through the the center of it and so our goal was to f try to find fish pushing bait into a certain area so usually corners are those best areas 
and yeah so we gridded out this end and we've been catching a few fish and hopefully we can get a big one but between trying to stay warm and hunger i don't know if we can <laughs> Another little one. Dinks today. Dinks, dinks, dinks. God, there's some big marks that roll through though. Just gotta connect with one. There's a heavier one. Bass, that one got me excited though. He was tugging good when he came up the hole and he was the right color. Sheesh. All right, thick mama bass though. See ya. Wow, big old crap. Okay, I guess they get a little healthier when they get big. Sheesh. Okay, he yeah, just came out of nowhere. Yeah, look at that. He's not anorexic. No, All right. they get big enough to eat those bluegills, man. Wow, did you see, like, Thick. there was nothing on your vex, and then brick red mark, yeah, and just, and see. just your rod was just, <laughs> wow. I'm okay, glad I didn't blow that one, that Jeez. thing's built like a freight Yeah, train. that's a beef. Wow. <laughs> All the other ones are just like, <laughs> laser thin. Alright, just caught this one, this is like the first, actually pretty decent one that we got today. Um, and we were just commenting before on how crazy thin and like skeletal almost these crappies were we were catching. They were just like super anorexic just about. And then we finally caught one that has some size to it and it's built one. Super thick across the back, nice deep fish. And that was on that same bait we were talking about before, that little white and kind of glitter pinhead minnow. Um, just pretty much like the bait fish we saw earlier. So I'm gonna let this one go really quick, get back down there. There's still tons and tons of marks. A lot of them are bluegill, and it seems like the crappies are just kind of mixed in. So hopefully we can get some more big ones like that. My whole vex literally was just all bluegills. The screen just got wiped. There was nothing on it, and then one just brick came in and just launched and just vapor trailed up, and my rod just loaded. So I'm just going to start dropping right back down, see if we can get another one going. We've caught, I don't know, probably a dozen or more since we moved down to this area, and Hopefully something goes down here in this last hour of light, but that was pretty cool to at least get a hold of one, and it was freaking stout. That whole rod just absolutely loaded. Okay, there's a massive cold front rolling in right now. It has gotten wicked cold, um, and the bite's really not very good. So we're gonna head out and go look for something better, but have no clue where that'll be. So wherever we go next will be a big surprise for you and us because we have nothing right now. So I need to do a little bit of explaining. After we left that lake, we were defeated obviously. It's been tough as we have said, but we were ready to try something new. But when we got back to the ramp, we actually ended up getting back to Waldo and Pinkala's trucks and finding that their trucks had gotten broken into. Mine and Griff's were left alone, and really the only reason theirs got broke into was there was no one parked next to them. We were at an access completely filled with people. There were people everywhere, and uh, yeah, it, it happened in broad daylight. And not only did they get broken into and have their windows smashed in, they had all their camera gear, iPads, hard drives, you name it. Uh, got stolen out of their vehicles. So I don't know if any of you have ever had stuff really valuable to you stolen from you. It, it really sucks. I know Ryan lost a ton of hunting footage and there's really no way to replace those memories and that footage. But Sobe and myself and Griff and you know the crew came together and we started GoFundMe. And uh, we're really just trying to raise money for Waldo and Pink so that they can get their stuff back. Yes, insurance should be able to cover some of this stuff, but if you're familiar with our friend group, last year Pinkala's truck actually got stolen out of his driveway. So with 
different claims and just different things going on. Basically, he's not able to get a claim on the stop. So Sobe and myself really want to help raise the money. Uh, if you're able to give a dollar, 50 cents, five dollars, whatever it is, anything, I'll have a link right here. And uh, I know the guys would really appreciate it. You know, we we put so much heart and effort into everything we film and do. We love sharing these experiences with all of you and to lose everything that uh, you film it with and document it with, that's just really hard. So please, if you have anything else to spare, I know it can be a little tough, but uh, I know Ryan would really appreciate it. I know Waldo would really appreciate it. So other than that, we're going to go back to the episode. Uh, yeah, things got better. So this middle part of winter, which kind of ends up setting up the same way almost every year, it's kind of this late January through mid February kind of time. It's like three to four weeks of just awful. <laughs> uh, frustration, yeah. There's been a little bit of that. So what you all may not see necessarily, may, maybe, you do with not quite as many episodes lately or whatever, whatever it might be. Um, we have been extremely confused and frustrated lately. Uh, the bite the last three or four weeks has detrimentally shut off. I mean, it's been a combination of things of hitting lakes we know really well and things just not panning out or, you know, fish not be, want, doing what we want them to do. We're talking about bite windows, and bite windows don't even exist right now. Uh, either that or we're on the wrong lake at the wrong time, we're in the wrong backwater, we should have been there a week ago. Whatever it might be, our timing's all off. It's like, it's not even fun to be out there. The temps are just brutal cold. I mean, we've been dealing with like negative stretches of temperature that are like a week plus long, lots of below zero stuff. Even the days when you do get some better temps, the wind is nuts, we get snow, it's just like brutal temps, the barometric pressure's all over the place. We have yet to have ideal conditions for like the past month. Honestly, a lot of times it does, makes you not even want to go and do it. It's just kind of like, you're kind of over it, to be honest with you. We've been just grinding our asses off, going from lake to lake to lake, and it's been, it's been a lot of work. I mean, we've burnt up a couple drills now. I mean, it's been, it's been a really just a tough last three weeks for us. Uh, and we're frustrated. I mean, you start off a year catching a bunch of big fish and you feel like, you know, you're, you're capable of doing it. Um, and when it doesn't go that way, it gets really frustrating really fast, especially when, you know, we put this all out for all of you to see. We feel like we should be doing something different, but the reality is nothing's working. I mean, this bite sucks right now. And we're just trying to get some momentum back and really get back into the groove here, uh, get back on some of these bites where we're getting some really quality fish. But yeah, to be honest, this time of the year, it just blows. I mean, we've had some days where we've gone out, we haven't caught fish over 10 inches, so. It, uh, yeah, it gets really frustrating. And the past three or four weeks have been that. And, uh, we're gonna show you the bites we've been on and everything we've been doing, and sometimes it's just not great. Uh, and that's that's really just fishing, you know? Trying to get on bites consistently and find bigger fish, it's just not happening right now. And, and we're not <laughs> we're not enjoying it. But I mean, we just kind of rally each other and kind of keep at it and just say, hey, you know, the next one's gonna be the, the start of, you know, it going off again. And, uh, and it will be, I mean, it's happening, so it's gonna happen. It's almost a favorite time of the year, so we gotta keep a positive mindset because things are gonna happen. You just gotta keep grinding it out. Welcome back. It is a few days after our failure of a weekend, basically. Did have a lot of fun, though, fishing with Lift Bridge and in the Permi, but yeah, all Ryan's stuff got jacked, Waldo's got jacked. Um, thank you so much for you who have contributed to the GoFundMe. But uh, yeah, we're just trying to get Pink his camera stuff back because he's not able to through insurance because of his trunk getting stolen last year and homeowners insurance stuff, just a lot of complicated things. So anything we can do to help out, that's what we're really trying to do. And uh, yeah, anything extra will just go to 
um, future anglers in Minnesota. So helping everybody. But now it is uh, the afternoon. It is absolutely beautiful out. It's like 40 degrees. We got low pressure and we're gonna go hit an afternoon into evening bite where hopefully, Griff, are we gonna catch big fish today? Hopefully. Yeah. It's been a struggle. Hopefully. So Griff and I got everything packed up. We're gonna hit the road and uh, Waldo's gonna meet us later tonight. Pinkala's taking a little breather. So uh, yeah, hopefully we finally catch some big ones. Been a while, been like a month, hasn't it? Too long. It's been way too long. It's been a really bad bite lately. So let's change that. You are not going to believe what this thing is. Oh my God. <laughs> I got a, a freaking sucker minnow. <laughs> well, that is not a big crappie. His little rubber lips himself. So yeah, so uh, we just got out here, we're hole hopping, just kind of checking the area, seeing what we find, seeing big marks, and uh, got one to bite. Little rubber lips. Um, yeah, I didn't know what to say when that came up the hole. I literally looked at it like, what is that? But, ate the gold drop kick with the Mackie Mackie motor oil on it. And so yeah, so, um, I'm wearing the, I've been wearing these hard water bronze lenses all year, I'm kind of prototyping them for relevant, and uh, I absolutely love them. But uh, what they do is they actually drown out the white, the white light that comes off the snow from the reflections of the sun. It helps with eye fatigue, and then also it helps you see your graph better when you're out on the on the ice. Um, but what we're doing this month. Is it this month or? We'll flash a date below. Okay, but the uh, promo code is TCC20 and that gets you 20% off any relevant glasses, not just the hard water bronze, any of them. Perfect. Well, now we're going to scout and try to not find yes. suckers. We're going to try to find crappies, not suckers. No. Yeah. It's still a fun fight, though. We finally caught something big. Yes. <laughs> Pinhead. Mine's chartreuse. Absolutely come unloaded on the thing. Down its throat. Now I did. There we go. Well, I finally caught a fish. It's not the right species, but I was getting denied a ton. And Griff's been steady catching. So I cycled through like four baits, but little bluegill, everything's out here in this basin right now. Really? There's so many bluegills. I think, anyways. I think a lot of bluegills. Oh, baby crappie, here we go, on the board. Well, that's the right species. And we'll just keep on working. You close the gap like a crappie. And it's cause you are. You're just tiny. There we go. Griff and I have drilled out an area. We are just in a basin. Nothing special really. Uh, just kind of actually we're on like the flat-ish uh, leading into the basin. It's a really slow break. Um, so like 13, 14 feet. Basin heads out to I don't know, 20, 25, something like that. But uh, yeah, we're starting to find a lot of fish. They're definitely getting really active. We're going to 
to be staying here into the night. Uh, I think our main goal is going to be just to stay mobile. There's a lot of permanents out here, a lot of generators, a lot of noise. So, name of the game, like we've talked about before, is working around the noise and finding the quiet areas. And uh, that's hopefully where we'll connect with the big one. But uh, it's been a good start so far. Far, much better bite than we have ran into the last three or four, uh, three or four weeks. So this should be fun. Decent crappie. These guys are just bricks, though. So much weight compacted in a little body. They're eating very good. If we get a big one out here, they're gonna be. They're gonna be really healthy. Sun's just starting to go down. Fish are getting really active. That's good. Hopefully we'll be stumbling into our first night bite. Got that one. Gosh, these things are heavy. I might have to get this one out of the deucer. The crappies are definitely starting to come through. This is good. Not very big still, but they're so heavy. Dude, these things are so heavy. I've had a couple really big marks roll through this hole in the last like three minutes. Perfect. There we go, there's a big saucy one. Pinhead to the face. Oof. Chris got a big one. I have a pretty good fish on right now too. Nope. It's just your average one. <laughs> Alright, well, so I caught this one. We're gonna go check in with Griff and uh, see the one he caught. Let me get the camera quick. We've been out here for probably about an hour. We're just kind of setting up for a night bite and uh, kind of found where the fish are and been changing baits and kind of found what they want. And uh, At first we're using plastic, at least I was, and I couldn't catch any of the bigger ones, so I switched to a pinhead. And now my size averages went up quite a bit. So, but yeah, that's a solid fish. I mean, we're gonna get her back, but that's a beautiful one to start off. So it just gets better. Nice. Well, that felt good trying to catch something that was not tiny. Life's good. Good vibes right now. <laughs> good vibes. <laughs> not a bad one. Starting to get dark here. Um, still running that pinhead. This one glows really nice in the dark, so I'm gonna keep that one on here now that we're getting into the dark period, but I'm a solid eater. So, Waldo's here. Hey, how's it going? I had to work all day. <laughs> okay, so now Griff, what do we need to do? We need to move. They definitely blew from this area now that it's dark, so I think we're gonna just shift, maybe do the tighter break and see if they did shift that way. They definitely left this one out. So just keep hold hopping, see what happens. Fish move from daytime spots to nighttime spots. Who would have thought? Yeah. Yeah, right? All right. Time to move. Oh, my Lord. Hello. Night bite engage. Let me go get the camera. Well, here's Griff. Here's a unit. Yep, sorry, the GoPro actually died. And we had some technical difficulties. It'll happen. It'll happen every once in a while. But I'm just gonna keep her down here, keep her nice and hydrated. We're only in 15 foot of water right now, so we don't have to worry about barrel trauma on these fish at all, but that's a good one. What are your guesses on length? I think that's a good guess. I think that's a good guess, 13 and a half. Well, we just stuck this beautiful crappie. I'm not even sure how long it is, but it is built like a freight train. It's got a super thick back to it. Uh, that one actually came in suspended. Ooh, that is probably the biggest 
12 and like seven eighths inch crappie I think I've ever caught. I don't even know how much that weighs, but if we get a tank tonight, it's gonna be a truly special fish. Well, I'm gonna get this guy back. He's been out for a little bit. Beautiful release. Um, that one just came on a uh, three millimeter drop XL. Um, I'm using the drop XL because it's got a bigger gap hook. We're going for big fish that a little extra gap can help. Uh, and just a chartreuse plastic. I actually caught it on Griff's Chronicle Rod. It's a little windy out here, so I wanted to be close to hold to kind of protect it from the wind. Um, but yeah, we're going to keep popping around. I think we found a couple more fish. Uh, we All we did was we just shifted over a little bit in the basin. And the boys found a lot of fish earlier, and so they couldn't have gone too far. So we're going to keep bouncing in the gaps of these permanent ice houses for a little bit longer and uh, see if we can't get a giant. Hell yeah, boys. Yep, he's not very big though. Another dink, but look at that thing. Look at how tall he is. Built like a bluegill. It's just ridiculous. Bye. Hey, see ya. They are not smart, I guess. Yes, they are. They have learned how to knock the minnow off the blade jig and then eat the minnow. That thing hit me so f on. Oh yeah, they don't mess around once they want it. Oh, here we go, baby. Game time. It's a big one. He's gonna crush it. Big? I don't know. It's pretty, it's kind of weird. The Adam special. I'm very good at these nine inch beef cakes and I got my minnow back. But wow. check check his mouth. Check his mouth. Does he have no Nope. No other minnow. Just oh, my minnow. A big one that ain't my mouth. <clears throat> All right, the blade Waldo and I are on the blade jig pattern. Not a big one by any means, but they're eating it way better than jig and plastics, so I'm about to try a wax worm. Improvement. Alright, so my GoPro died, but uh Got this beauty right after it died, of course, but uh, just been hole hopping. It kind of got tough there for a while, and uh, we've just been making little adjustments, and we found out that like three mil glow jig um, with one wax worm. Who would have knew? But uh, they don't want to eat plastic, so we've just putting, been putting one single wax worm on there, and I think the results speak for itself with that big mama. How big is it? Oh, yeah. Not as long as she looks, I guarantee that. Just short of 12 and 3 quarter. They're just bricks out here though. I mean, they look like they're 14, but they're not. They're just, I mean, really? Look at the back on that. All right, go home, girl. Well, that was fun. Waldo's behind me catching them, so hopefully they're picking up. Um, we're just gonna keep hole hopping and hopefully run into El Gigante at some point. The fattest nine inches ever. That'd be a good taco. Holy shit, it worked. Woohoo! I caught a fish. It is late, late, late in the night now. I think we're getting close to midnight. The fish are starting to eat better. And it's definitely raining slash sleeting slash snowing right now. So that's great. But the fish are starting to eat better. I'm sorry for the low quality video on GoPros in the middle of the night, but we are trying our best right now. Oh, 
another eater sized crappie. Okay, and that is kind of a wrap up for the night. It's actually like two in the morning right now. We stayed out a long time chasing these fish around and just honestly hole hopping. Caught a lot, a lot, a lot of nine to 11 inches. Um, and yeah, like we've said, we've said multiple times, the bite's been tough lately. Um, it's definitely looking like it's gonna improve here soon, especially with this warmer weather. I mean, that's just what's gonna happen. Today was a lot better than it's been the last few weeks. We just didn't really land on a you know really big fish. Um, but yeah, so that's good to see. Fish are getting more active. We're still on the chase. We're gonna keep getting after it. We appreciate all of you for staying along and tuning in. Uh, please leave comments, subscribe, like all the videos. We appreciate it. And yeah, we're not done yet. We are still chasing them and uh, the best bite's still ahead of us. So until next time, uh, we are on to the next one. <laughs>